all very much for coming. Um, I'm uh, very excited. I'm a huge uh, Pamela Sue Martin fan. Um, uh, I mean, I've been wanting to do this evening uh, since I started doing these events at the American Cinematheque. Uh, I think she's a really uh, underappreciated and underrated actress. Um, uh, you know, most people know her from her two enormously successful uh, television series, uh, Dynasty and Nancy Drew. Um, but I, I sort of fell in love with her uh, up here on the, on the silver screen. Uh, you know, her big hit was uh, The Poseidon Adventure, but she also made um, a series of, of smaller, intimate kind of character studies that uh, I think were, were, were quite terrific. And unfortunately, they're very difficult to see these days. Movies like uh, To Find a Man and Buster and Billy and tonight's second feature, uh, Our Time. Um, I would say that an artist or an actor is known from for this kind of the, the choices they make, and and, uh, and what I think is great about Pamela is that she sort of used her teen stardom uh, to get some very sort of uh, idiosyncratic uh, movies made. Um, uh, she started off as a model, and uh, she made her feature uh, uh, film debut in 1972 in To Find a Man. We're actually very lucky the screenwriter of that movie is here tonight, uh, Arnold Schulman. It's a great movie. It's very hard to see that um, it actually premiered uh, in competition at the uh, Cannes Film Festival uh, against movies like Solaris and uh, Robert Altman's Images. Uh, but when it came to be released in the United States, the studio sort of sort of dumped the movie, and uh, uh, we actually tried to show it tonight, but uh, print doesn't even exist for the film. Uh, uh, but of all, uh, strangely enough, of all places. Uh, iTunes has come to the rescue, and it's on iTunes these days. But if you get a chance to see it, I think the movie was suppressed uh, because of its subject matter. Uh, it's a very heartfelt, uh, sincere teenage comedy about a young girl uh, trying to get an abortion. And uh, it's sort of not the uh, usual studio fluff. Um, but not to be deterred, actually, Pamela followed the movie up with another movie that has kind of a, an abortion subplot, uh, Our Time. Uh, which is our second movie tonight. Uh, and I think she's just terrific in that movie. I really like that movie a lot. It's beautifully directed by Peter Himes, and uh, it has a sort of a, a core central relationship between uh, two young girls that I think is really realistic, and I wish that movie was revived and known uh, more. But it's probably most famous uh, because it's the first screen pairing of uh, two future uh, uh, TV detectives, uh, Pamela and Parker Stevenson. And uh, we're very lucky that, that, uh, that Parker's here tonight. He's going to join us in the Q&A after our, our first movie, which is um, The Lady in Red, uh, where Pamela plays the, the title role. It's kind of her feminist gangster picture. Um, I think it's actually the last great movie made from the, uh, the uh, Roger Corman low-budget uh, school of filmmaking. It, it launched the careers of uh, director Louis T and composer James Horner and the great screenwriter John Sayles. Uh, it's actually the first movie uh, made uh, by John, and it, you can really see kind of the anti-establishment theme that he kind of works at in, in later films. Uh, John actually emailed me this week uh, saying how happy he was that we were showing the film and uh, how much he loves uh, Pamela's work in the movie. Um, I think when Corman greenlit the movie, he would have been very happy to just have a standard exploitation movie he could have showed at the drive-ins, though, I think with sales and, and Pamela gave them back with something much more. It's a, um, it's a, not an exploitation movie, it's actually a movie kind of about exploitation. It's about a young woman who, who kind of gets it from every angle. Uh, she's used by the good guys, she's used by the bad guys, uh, until, you know, she really, uh, a life of crime is really the only thing that makes sense for her. Uh, it's a terrific film and a terrific performance. I, I, I'm told it's one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies. Uh, Apparently, when you uh, enter his house, there's a huge poster of it that greets you. Um, and we're very fortunate that this is, we actually have the last remaining print of Lady in Red. Uh, so they occasionally will look a little rough, but this is the last print uh, available of this movie. So um, uh, I mean, one of the reasons I do this is I want to shed attention on some movies that haven't gotten enough love, and I think this is a terrific movie. So enjoy. We're also really lucky because Pamela's here tonight. We're going to do a Q&A with her as soon as this movie's over. So enjoy from 1979, The Lady in Red. Young Pamela Sue
then. I mean, it really, it looks great. How did, how did you become part of this film? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they cast you. I don't remember. It was such a long time ago. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, well, this is, uh, I guess I was right to some kind of specific questions. Uh, you know, this is a period movie. Actually, the second movie is a period movie. How do you, as an actor, prepare for a film like this? Did you actually research the a real lady in red? I don't know how factual this movie is, or? Oh, yeah, I don't, um, no, I didn't. <laughs> I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed saying things like, it ain't your day no more pops, and right. smoking <laughs> cigarettes, and, you know. It was fun, it was fun to be tough. I was always a tomboy, and, you know, she's a survivor, and I'm a survivor. <laughs> so it was all good. Well, it's amazing how, how great the movie looks, because this is really shot on an extremely low budget. I think it's yeah. like $600,000. I mean, can you believe that movie's made for $600,000? Wow. Wow. I know it was made in about 30 days. Wow. Yeah, so oh. that was a really short um, film schedule. Right, and it wasn't even, it wasn't shot in Chicago, it was shot here, correct? Yeah, yeah. That's like downtown Los Angeles, if you can believe it, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, by the way, I talked to, uh, I emailed uh, Robert Forster today, he says hello, he, he, he loves this movie. Oh, I loved him in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah. I, I want to back way up, um, uh, you know, you, you grew up in Connecticut, correct? Yes. And, and you started off as a model. How did, was, was being an actress something you always wanted to do? Was it, uh, how did you make the transition, how did you become an actress? Uh, well, no, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know. Lots of little girls dream of being in the movies and stuff. And I think I did when I was really young, and I pretty much forgot about it. And I was just uh, modeling um, in New York City to make money for college. Mm -hmm. And um, I started modeling when I was 16. And um, one thing just kind of led to another. The agency I was working with asked me to audition for commercials, and the next thing I know, they were asking me to audition for a film. And, 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 if, and um, reading script for a film was, was a lot easier than the ridiculous commercial stuff. So, I don't know, it just was, it just kind of happened. Right. And so, I, I know Arnold Schulman is here tonight. Yeah. That was your first movie. I, 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 I love that movie. Can you, uh, any interesting stories from Define the Man? That was your first movie. What's it like to, you know, very rarely is someone's first acting gig, uh, you know, uh, the lead in a, in a, in a studio picture. Uh, well, um, I, I, I would have to say that my primary emotion was fear <laughs> most of the time. Maybe the first 10 years I was in Hollywood. <laughs> but um, I, uh, we survived. It was, it was, it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I, I mostly remember this, the scariest thing I remember was the first day that we were filming. We were in Central Park and there were crowds of people around. And in my, in my ignorance, I thought they were all looking at me. I felt very <laughs> self-conscious and very flipped out about it, but um, after about the first week, I, I kind of buckled down and just learned to sort of shut things out and get the job done, mm -hmm. whatever was required. <laughs> Did you, uh, when it was at the Con Film Festival, did you go to the Con Film Festival? Were you a part of that? Have I ever been to the Con I mean, Were you part of that film, or, or have you been otherwise? Well, or? yeah, uh, I actually wrote and co-produced a film called Torchlight, Light, yeah. um, which wasn't that good. <laughs> but, um, and we took that to, to the Cannes Film Festival, and, and I, I always think it's funny, um, people talking about the Cannes Film Festival and everything, because I just thought it was such a big place where people were shopping and selling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not that romantic. Well, it's funny, there's, there's, there's two different sides to it. There's the, there's the market, which is actually, everything is geared for that market, and then there's the, you know, the ten films that are, that are in competition, and that's a separate thing entirely. Yeah, yeah, right. it's still a market. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to uh, write a screenplay? What made, how did you? Uh, uh, well, I had known. Um, I had a very good friend who suffered from drug addiction, and, um, and I was motivated to write that story. That was a true story. Right. You produced that film too. I co-produced it. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, now the uh, uh, the movie you made after after to find a man is that was a gigantic step up in terms of budget and prestige, and you're working with like. Something like five Academy Award winners, uh, the oh, Poseidon right. Adventure. I mean, uh, what's it? I mean, it was a gigantic phenomenon at the time. What, what's it like to be a part of a, a blockbuster like that? 
Well, all my friends had gone to college, and I was there by myself. <laughs> I didn't know anybody, and um, um, I was just kind of like the little kid on the block, like getting in that movie. Mm -hmm. And I was just tagging along, I think, I felt like. And um, so, um, I don't know, I was like a fly on the wall, I think, in that movie. Um, our, our, our second movie tonight is Our Time, and I, I want to, uh, we have a special guest out there. We have uh, the co-star in that movie with you, uh, Parker Stevenson. Parker, Parker come, come up here. And, uh, <laughs> well, I actually know Parker. Our, 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 our daughters are good friends. We, uh, we sort of see each other in pajamas picking our, our kids up at each other's houses. Now, how did you guys how did you guys meet? Did you meet uh, on our time, or uh, was it uh, on the set, or how did how, 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 uh, this friendship come about? Uh, we met on the set. Do you remember if we tested her? I was trying to remember if I remember. Did we test together? I don't remember. I don't, remember. I don't think so. I don't think. I, I don't. I just know that. <laughs> I mean, you tested and she didn't. <laughs> 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 Writing. Um, 
Thank you. 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 Thank